The Bible claims that there was a flood 4,400 years ago. Well, if that's true, is there evidence of such a flood? The Turkish government believes that they have Noah's Ark within their borders. They established Noah's Ark National Park. This boat here is 6,000 feet above sea level in the mountains of Ararat, 300 Egyptian cubits long, precisely what the Bible claims. That is, here's a boat in the mountains of Ararat, 6,000 feet above sea level, 300 Egyptian cubits long. This boat has rivets made of an alloy we didn't discover until the 1920s, and anchor stones strewn across the countryside with holes at the top that would need to be sent to a factory to make a hole like this. Whereas there's plenty of evidence across the planet of flood. There's erosion and evidence on the Sphinx that could only be explained by a flood. Whereas they get seven inches of rain a year in this region of the country. Also evidence is the pyramids were built after the flood. This evidence is a civilization living in Egypt prior to the flood. The geologic column is a hoax. These polystrata fossils go between the layers. Trees fall down when they die. It's not very wise to say the layers are of different ages. Does the secular world provide evidence of man's origins? Spaceship Earth at Epcot is a ride where the history of man is explained as first the caveman, and then after the caveman comes the Egyptian. That's all we know. Well, this also explains a flood 4,400 years ago, whereas this earth would be like Gilligan's Island. It would be like Tom Hanks in the movie Castaway, living in a cave and drawing pictures of his girlfriend on the wall, like a caveman. Understanding the Egyptian timeline begins with Imhotep. Imhotep is Joseph. Imhotep is mouth of I am, the great I am. They have so many things in common. They both lived to be 110 years old. They both, there was 12 brothers. The Imhotep was second to Pharaoh Djoser for seven years of feast and seven years of famine, which is proved right here on this rock. Uh, Pharaoh Djoser was Joseph's Pharaoh, D-J-O-S-E-R. Um, Joseph clearly is Imhotep. Aligning Joseph with Imhotep, we understand that the step pyramid was built for Pharaoh Djoser and is where the grain was stored for the seven years of feast in these pits. These pits demonstrate first in, first out, and there's carvings of people going up and down the steps carrying the grain first in, first out. So understanding the Egyptian timeline begins with Imhotep. Un Josephus understood that the Israelites built the pyramids in bondage. With this appropriate timeline, we now can understand the same. There was a new king over Egypt who didn't know Joseph, who enslaved the Israelites and forced them to hard labor building pyramids. His name was Snefero. He was the new king that didn't know Joseph, who began this period of pyramid building that lasted 200 years. Moses' grandfather was not born in Egypt, however his father Amram was. This proves that the modern translations are errant. 430 years is not the case. You can see that they lived 130 some years, and that proves that the sojourning began with Abraham 430 years from the time Abraham was commanded to go out and possess the land until the Red Sea crossing was 430 years. This is the pyramid where Moses slew the Egyptian. This was his pyramid that they were building for him. However, his evil stepfather was laid to rest in this pyramid at Hawara, Egypt. Uh, Moses did not want to be associated with this pharaoh or his daughter, Sobek Nufru, who drew him from the Nile. As you can see, these two Egyptians look just like each other, father and daughter, However, Amenemhet IV looks like an Israelite, does not look Egyptian. Amenemhet IV and Amenemhet III were co-regents for nine years when Amenemhet IV disappears after naming this Joseph's Causeway at Hawara that connects uh, al Fayum to the Nile. This is Moses, Amenemhet IV. 
that's easily understood when understanding the correct timeline. Who is the Pharaoh of the Exodus? The Ipira Papyrus dates this event undeniably in the Middle Kingdom during the reign of Nephrotep, the Pharaoh who drowned in the Red Sea. This Pharaoh would not give the Israelites straw to make the mud bricks for his pyramids. Nephrotep's son is shown here next to his casket, who was the firstborn offering in the Passover. Nephrotep chased the Israelites through this passage where the fire went up behind to this beachhead here in Nueva, Egypt, where this pillar from Solomon's time marks this event, Red Sea Crossing. This beachhead is big enough to withhold millions of people and has a pass underneath the water that drops off significantly on either side. Underneath the Red Sea are found many, many artifacts, chariot wheels, axles, horses' hooves, femur bones, and the like, evidencing that this was indeed the Red Sea crossing. If this is where they crossed, then where is Mount Sinai? We're told in Galatians that Mount Sinai is out of Egypt in Arabia, and uh, here we have it. Here's where Mount Sinai is. It's in, uh, in, in what is now Saudi Arabia. Because tourists are unable to go to Saudi Arabia, we rely on Dr. David Kim's confirmation of Ron Wyatt's work. Here's Elijah's cave that he located, uh, among other things. This is also potentially the same uh, place where Moses, in, in Exodus 33, was interacting with the Lord. We also have a well that Dr. David Kim identifies that the, that the villagers there call it Moses' well, where he met his wife, Jethro's daughter. Here is Jethro's cave, according to Dr. David Kim, and Ron Wyatt and David Kim both bring back evidences of the Israelites at this location with chariots, cattle, and the like, uh, that also with a rock at Horeb that was split where the water came out, uh, there's also both gentlemen have evidenced that in their descriptions. Back in Egypt, the Hyksos, which could be the Amalekites, known as the foreigners, move into Goshen, the cities abandoned by the Israelites, and the capital moves to Luxor from Cairo. Why? This is Nephrotep's brother, Sobekhotep IV, who moves the capital to Luxor, to the Valley of the Kings, because the army drowns in the Red Sea and they can't defend themselves. This is almost the first who, several generations later, finally expels the Hyksos with much effort. When understanding the correct timeline, we know that the Queen of Sheba that visits Solomon is Hatshepsut, and we also know that Tutmos III is Shishak, referred to in the Bible. The secular timeline and the biblical timeline are reconciled with Pharaoh Necho in 600 BC. For, for various anomalies, 900 additional years are added to the secular timeline, or as we know from the scriptures, that this time is less. In summary, the Bible teaches that Jesus was 2,000 years ago, David was 3,000 years ago, Abraham was 4,000 and Noah was 4,400 years ago. Please like and subscribe to my video.